chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. And I'm going to be cross-referencing this with Mark chapter 5. But we're going to look at the text out of Mark chapter 9. I'm nervous. I'm a little scared. Um, because the things that the Lord began to show me, I have watched unfold. Lord, help me today through the course of this worship. So, if I thought I might take off running, y'all just understand. Just understand. But I saw the text get up off the paper. And the things that the Lord began to even show me and speak to me. And so, I just don't know what he gonna do, but he gonna do it. <laughs> Jesus, he gonna do it. In Mark chapter 9, let's begin our reading in verse 18. Father, we thank you for giving us another chance to give you glory. Thank you for another chance to receive of your word, to receive that which you know, God, that we stand in need of. So I praise you now, God, for what you've already done, and I thank you that you will now move us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Exceed our expectations even on this evening. Speak your word to us and let there be demonstration of your word with power in the name of Jesus. I'm yielded as your vessel. Do whatever you desire. Speak to us as you will and as you have purposed. And we, God, will give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 9, verse 18. You there? It reads, while he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler. This ruler was a man. Let me just throw that in there. And he worshipped. The man came and worshipped. The man came. Jarius was his name. And Jarius, the man, I know it's Women's Day, but the man came and worshipped. Mm. Oh, the man came and worshipped, saying, my daughter is even now dead. Mark would say that he comes to Jesus, he falls at his feet, and he requests of him that I pray thee, uh, Jesus come, lay your hand on my daughter, she's at home, and she's dying. Um, but Matthew tells us that the girl now is even dead. Come, lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And so Jesus arose, he followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood for 12 years came behind him and she touched the heel of his garment for she said within herself if i may but touch his garment i shall be whole but jesus turned him about and when he saw her he said daughter be of good comfort thy faith has made thee whole and the woman was made whole from that Hour. And the woman was made whole from that hour. I want to speak from the thought very briefly. There's a miracle in the making. Um, um, as, I consider, as I consider the, the text to which we give our attention today, we all understand the background of this story as according to Matthew and Mark as well. Um, in the text we see that there is there is great need of the assistance of Jesus. Um, um, it begins with a man who has, according to Mark, a 12-year-old little girl at the house. This girl um, I want to consider as the apple of her daddy's eye. Scripture shows me, even according to Luke, that she is the only, she's the only daughter of this man. So no doubt because uh, she is the only daughter, the only child, um, there must have been a great deal of devastation or, or frustration or just a great uh, anxiety Anxiety, a great urgency um, in him to get to Jesus when he now begins to recognize that the situation that my daughter is in has not gotten any better. As a matter of fact, um, if I, the man, don't make a move, y'all gonna get this in a minute. If I, the father, don't make a move, if I don't get myself together enough to where I can get out of the situation, to where I don't keep my mind on the situation, to where I don't allow what's happening around me uh, to depress or to discourage me if I Jarius, if I the man don't make a move there's a chance my baby girl is going to die so scripture shows us uh, that Jarius now um, he leaves the situation sometimes uh, my brothers and sisters we've got to step outside uh, of the situation we've got to we've got to learn how and when uh, to make moves now you must understand 
understand this, that this is um, the only daughter of this man. This girl is sick, no doubt. Um, the man has concern um, that maybe if I leave, her life could expire before I return. Maybe, maybe he feels um, at some point that because uh, I don't know when this thing may turn for the worse, I, I feel that maybe I should spend uh, the last few hours, minutes, or moments uh, that I have in her presence. But um, Jerry shows uh, all of us something that is critical. He decides that there is no need uh, for me to sit here in the middle of the chaos. There is no need for me to stay here focusing on something that I don't have the strength nor the power in myself to bring resolution to. I believe Jerry shows us uh, the necessity of not focusing on the chaos uh, but focusing toward Christ. Jerry shows us that sometimes uh, um, even though we feel what we feel, even though there is now great concern for us, we've got to learn when to leave the situation and seek out Jesus. I need you to look at somebody sitting near you and tell them how you need to seek out Jesus. So 